That is a heartbreaker. As the Cardinals miss out on the playoffs. <sighs> Just barely. We lost on tiebreaker. There were three teams at nine and eight. And we missed out on tiebreaker. So did the Giants. There will be a new Super Bowl champion in 2032. As we fall short. But what a season. What a season. The fact that we are still that decent. I didn't mean to go to standings, but I want to look at the stats. The fact that we are still that decent, and by the way, the Bills and Seahawks both made the playoffs, so those draft picks aren't going to be great. After getting rid of our franchise quarterback because he wanted almost $400 million <laughs> is ridiculous. Kenneth Pickett. 19 touchdowns. We have our quarterback. Look at him. A 106.8 rating for Kenny Pickett. Jesus Christ. 1,200 yards, eight touchdowns for Walton, which is just incredible. Our fullback had three touchdown runs. Uh, Receiving-wise, Lonnie Reed was the main threat this time out. Obviously, our passing game took a big hit. But 12 touchdowns for him, nine for Macklin. Only two for Bush this year. Uh, Dave Meltzer. Six downs over two games. Good for you, Davey. Uh, yep, our O-line fucking sucked after all of those trades. 122 tackles for Damian Johnson between us and the Rams. 11 and a half sacks for Chess. 10 for DeAndre McGee. And our pick leader with three was Khalid Callahan. Uh, McPherson returns to form, hitting 14 of 16. So we'll take a look at the league-wide stats now that this season is over. Joe Burrow leading the way in terms of yardage. Josh Leach for the Bear. Good for Josh Leach, man. We decided he wasn't the one, and that was the right choice, but good for him. Uh, touchdown leader with 42 was Jack Garrison of the Jets. 32-1 and one for Justin Herbert. And Dennis finished 32 and 6. The pick leader with 11, Kerry Clifford, Anthony Richardson. Kurt Slater was up there too in double digits. Rushing leader, surprise, surprise, it's Robinson, 1,600 yards. Walton finished third. Touchdown leader with 18, Dijon Poole. Second year pro for Nolens. We traded Payne in division, sure did. C.D. Lamb led the way in terms of receptions. Jamar Chase was there for yardage, though. And the touchdown king with 18, Jamar Chase. It's calculated risk to trade Payne within the division because he might not resign with them. Sacks allowed Dalton Whitfield. Oof. Tackle leader was Jamichael Carmichael. <laughs> Love that name. Sack leader, Micah Parsons with 13 and a half. Chest finished third. And the pick leader with five, DeMar Wilcox of the Seahawks. So, so close yet so far to making the playoffs. It would have been nice. It was not meant to be. We are showing up with $17 million in cap space heading into this offseason. But again, we have three first round picks. And it is obviously taking into account all of the money that we have uh, with those picks as the Super Bowl this year, Super Bowl 67, will be between the Chargers and the Cowboys. The Chargers and the Cowboys. As you get a look here, I'll give you a full look at the bracket. The Chargers making it through the Raiders, the Texans, and then the Jets, while the Cowboys survive Tampa, and Seattle, Dennis Payne, very nearly went back to back. So it is Dallas and Los Angeles in the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 67. Again, we were not able to go back to back to the surprise of pretty much nobody. Uh, let's take a look, though, at the yearly awards. As league MVP, Josh Allen. No real surprise. Coach of the Year, Braden Williamson of the Jets. 
AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Jamar Chase. Defensive Player is Will Anderson of the Texans. Top Rookie, Philip Payne of the Texans. Defensive Rookie, Danny Verdon of the Dolphins. We must make Super Bowl 69. NFC Offensive Player of the Year is Clark Garfield. Walton finished sixth. Defensive Player of the Year is Chest. Corbin Chest Williams. Defensive Player of the Year. He rewards us for giving him that new contract. DeAndre McGee finished fourth. Top rookie offensively was Shaq Franklin. Defensively, Eric Weldon of the Vikings. Back-to-back -back Defensive Player of the Year awards for Chest. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. Chest. Fucking Williams. We had to keep him. And he did get a new contract. Way to go, Chest. Way to go. He couldn't go. He couldn't possibly leave. Wasn't going to happen. So with that, the winner... Of Super Bowl 67. How about them Cowboys? Yeah, I had a feeling. I had a feeling. $60 million in cap space. But the Dallas Cowboys win number six behind quarterback I'm just Clark Garfield. Shot to Evan Blocker for the follow, by the way. We knew Clark Garfield was going to be special. <laughs> But well, we already had our guy at that time. Dallas wins their sixth Super Bowl. So we get a look at the retirements, man. Shows up $60 million in cap space right now. This is amazing. Uh, Justin Jefferson's gone. Sean Gary, Jair Alexander, Brian Burns, Max Crosby did retire as a Raider. Cole Komet, Isaiah Simmons, Roquan Smith, Bosa and Ayuk gone for the Niners. They're going to be so bad. So, so bad. Sean Slater, not Cody Mouch. Tristan Wirfs is gone. Josh Jacobs. Another pretty decent retirement class in terms of the, the quality of these players. Especially Daniel Jones. The GOAT. Daniel Jones. A lot of retirements. Wow. Frank Reich also retired. He was finished his career as the offensive coordinator in Kansas City. Uh, this will be our practice squatters, whatever. We'll go ahead and uh, go ahead. Auto update them. Upgrade update. Call it what you will. It's the same difference. Kenny Pickett didn't retire, by the way. So the resign phase. We do have a decision or two to make, but nothing major, which is great. And again, we have cap space. That's even with the draft picks being factored in. We're looking pretty good, all things considered here. We're looking pretty good. 85 overall team still. So we have to make it. So obviously, we'll take the fifth-year option of Marco Macklin. No shit. Um, Christian White will take the fifth-year option as well. Dalton Montague no longer wants to come back. I don't know if I can change my scheme fit. Um, Anthony Beckett can go. Uh, Norton can go. The only guy that I'm really worried about is Montague, but at the same time, I mean, he's been so good for us, though. But at the same time, is it worth overspending for someone who's a third to fourth option? We're going to let Kenny Pickett go for the moment. He wants to test the market. And we're finally losing Evan McPherson. I think we're going to let Montague go. The fact that I'd have to overpay to keep him. You're talking uh, 8 to $9 million a season for a third to fourth guy. When technically we could just keep Macklin, Bush, and Presley. Although Presley will have to make a decision there. I think we'll let Dalton go for now, which sucks. Because again... Um, very, very good for us, especially on route to the Super Bowl, but what are you going to do? So free agency. We actually have money to spend in free agency for once. But who's out there? Dark Spectre. What's going on? Free agency. Ooh, that's not good if Evan McPherson is the best. At quarterback, Mitch Glenn. 
the guy we almost traded for from the Colts. We'd have to overspend to get him now because he doesn't like our scheme. Wow. I mean, we could go for this guy. Just switch to a different scheme. I think I'm allowed to at this time of year, right? What the hell is this player card? Strong arm? I mean, he is still a superstar despite not playing. Even if we end up drafting another quarterback, we could still just have that guy and keep him on the team. What do you think? Do we throw our name into the I think we throw our name into the hat for that guy. Have a safety net in case this whole quarterback thing doesn't work out. Switch to a vertical zone run for now, because who the fuck cares? I mean, we haven't been sticking to a specific scheme, but at the same time, we haven't been hiring a head coach. We are the head coach, so it's not unrealistic to say I'm going to change strategies here. So back to stream has been good. Um, the Cardinals franchise has new life. I don't know how, but it does. So if we were to bring in Cameron Harden, he is 26, which concerns me a little bit. Five-year deal, but honestly, he's not getting paid that much to be a backup if the other deal happens. I'm going to think about it, but it's not really not a bad option for us. And then Glenn's there, too, at the same age. The problem is you could say, like, oh, shit, well, Glenn's better. Glenn's not going to go X-Factor. Harden could. Uh, no running backs to worry about. Like, Danny Sapp's not that bad. But, again, we still have, at least for one more season... Our star running back. We're not going to overspend on the fullback. Ooh, Johnny Brewer. Johnny Brewer. Well, this does a playoff contender, too. But again, this guy would be our fourth option unless we move that other wide receiver that we acquired from Cincy. What happened to Payne? We elected to trade him, and clearly, by the way, uh, he resigned in Seattle. We'll check the contract. He... I'm sure bankrupted that damn team. We do have some money that we could spend here. It's just how much do we want to spend? You know what? Because there's so much money we could spend. Let me go look at that contract right now because I got to really think about how aggressive I want to be in free agency here. But it could propel us right back into that contention. How much money did Dennis Payne get from Seattle? Good luck building a team around that, buddy. Good fucking luck. 60 to 70 million dollars for the first five of seven years. There is just no way we could have given him that money and still been able to build a core around him. It just wasn't going to happen. 384 million over seven years. Good fucking luck. And again, they have an aging core. They're boned. And we have their next two first round picks. They're boned. They're not going to get the help they need for him. <sighs> Defensively here. There's Miles Murphy. Julius Craig, but he's 30. An older Chase Young. Who is not that bad. We don't need a defensive tackle, but Jalen Carter's there. What do we got on the right side? Tony Walker. Ugh. Well, if we wanted to improve our defensive line, we could we could spend on Miles Murphy or Julius Craig. Or even like a one-year deal for Chase Young. Doesn't have abilities anymore, but still. Hey, it's our old friend, Kerry Spitzer. It's our old friend, Daniel Malone, who did hit the open market. He wants 10, nearly $11 million a year. Have fun, have fun, Daniel, because Jesus Christ, you're not getting that from me. And then Sebastian Harris, but he's 30. We're going to stick with a 4-3. We 
because of the two defensive tackles that we have. There's Christian Gonzalez as a veteran corner. Okay. There's a lot we could do here. At the same time, how much money do we want to spend? Our old friend Monty Henson there, too. How much money do we want to spend? Because we could still try to keep the old guard together. With the money that we free up. So, again, we need a quarterback. We know this. We got Walton. Fullback's fine. Again, Presley's probably going to want out. We don't know for sure, but he could be dealt for whatever. So we could, we could, we could, I mean, get a second running back, but I mean, they're not going to be that much better than Reynolds. We could get a new third wide out and deal Presley. We need a second tight end. O-line in general is a massive need. We need a new right end, right end, right edge, whatever you prefer. We got the two DTs. Linebacker, we got Damian Johnson, Fowler, and White. So we're good there. Corner, we got three good corners already. And we're good at safety. And then obviously we need a kicker and a punter, but we can do that later. So we're not going to find the quarterback, I'd say, that we want. That said, there is that guy who was with the Colts. We could get him in case we decide not to trade up to the first overall pick. That being Cameron Harden. But again, he's 26. Like, we'd need him to go X-Factor fast. Fast. Secondary running back position, we don't need the help there. The third wide out position, it's not worth overspending for Johnny Brewer. We will figure that out later. Another tight end, we could go for Matt Tate. Or Daniel Meadows. There is currently nobody interested in Matt Tate. So we are going to lowball this guy. And see if we can get a decent secondary tight end for the next two years. And if he takes it, cool. And if not, we can look in the draft. Defensive end. The safe bet. Honestly, I'm going to go with Chase Young as a one-year filler player. I think if we lowball Chase Young, it'll be a decent option for us. If we can find a good quarterback in the draft. Honestly, I'm leaning towards that. Or a good tight end. I'm, I am leaning towards that. Just because the money's dropping fast. Harden, we'd have to overspend on. To be in the running. Maybe not by that much. We go with the player friendly deal. Okay. So we could still go for Harden. Honestly, even a neutral offer might be more than the other options here. Let me see where that puts us. Yeah, even the neutral offer puts us in the lead. Him as a safety net's not bad. It's really not. And then for the O line, we got an 82 and 80. Another 82. Again, we can move people around. Matt Hall, our former center. Please tell me your name is Sandy Cheeks. Ah, uh, Sheldon. Why would you be a Sheldon? So we got two 82s. Connor Shivers. John Archer. Clifton Bryan was on our team before. He's a veteran now. Nobody's in for him. I think we can go for him. Again, try to kind of get him on a cheap deal. And then honestly, Shivers and Schumer... Both currently don't have an offer. Yeah, I'm going to say screw that uh, that tight end. Let's withdraw that offer. Go back to the O-line. It could be Schumer. It makes sense for it to be Schumer. Right? It does. And again, we'll try to lowball him too. So will this work? We are targeting Chase Young to be a one-year filler player, defensive end, three offensive linemen, and then Cameron Harden as a safety net. Now that's the question, is do we go for Harden or do we just say we get that quarterback no matter what? 
What if that quarterback in the draft is a bust, right? But what if he isn't? What if he's legit? Is every player in this universe made up? No, not at this point. There's still some real players kicking around. So Logan Gibbs is down to number two on the big board. Let's look at him, though. We should have some info here. 22-year-old scrambler, South Carolina. Ran a 4.8, so he's not the fastest, but listed with elite throw power, acceleration, and change of direction. And it was play... Ooh, only a C in awareness. So that'll have to be built up. His play action and his awareness is a bit concerning. That C in awareness isn't going to be the best for his overall. The other option is we take him and then we also take somebody like Gary Neal a little bit later on. Maybe Darius Bond, although with short accuracy, sucks. I think we might have to go for both quarterbacks. I think we might have to. I mean, I still need that to be the quarterback. Otherwise, we say we take a year off from drafting QBs and just go with the free agent. Let's go for this other quarterback here just to be just to be safe. Even if it's that extra cap space hurts, but we'll do what we got to do. Good song. I don't want it at the moment. All right. Let's see what happens here. As hit the wrong option there. Let's get the evaluation period. We got answers from everyone except Young and Brian. And we landed them. Connor Shivers, Cam Schumer, and Cam Harden. So Harden, they all took the cheaper deal. Well, Harden, not quite, but kind of. Not bad. Not bad at all. For the O-line, we could lowball Colt Dillard as well. All of a sudden, John Archer. John Archer's really interested. Uh, he was always interested, but... There's not a cheap deal for him. Do we need another offensive lineman? I mean, we still have that one other in the mix. Let me see what we got here. McPherson is hanging around there. I just can't dedicate the money to him right now. So one, two. Yeah, we could go for one more offensive lineman. Until we know if we get the other one. Well, yeah, right? There was two guys there, but those weren't the guys. No, they were the guys that we just signed because the quarterback was there, too. Yeah, we need a lot of offensive line help. A lot, a lot. We can afford to have one weaker position, maybe, with a UDFA. Um, let's lowball Colt Dillard and see if he's desperate. See if we can land him here. Back over to targeting. Young, Dillard, Clifton Bryan. We land Dillard, we land Bryan. We only need one more lineman on this team. We got four 80 plus linemen. 80 or better linemen. And the quarterback. We still haven't gotten an answer from Chase Young. He now has an offer from the Ravens. So it is unlikely that we end up with Chase Young. And unfortunately, that means we wasted our time. And it does mean that we wasted our time. So we will have to try to find somebody else for that defensive line. Can't really lowball Jalen Carter. We will have to find a filler player for the defensive line. So if that quarterback that we're looking at in the draft turns out to not be the guy, well, then shit. We take a defensive lineman. Again, right now, the money that we have in cap room has to go to one more offensive lineman. Uh, whoever's the best. There's a 78. We could lowball Landon Dickerson. Actually, lowball a couple of these guys. Major, what's going on, by the way? 
Um, Zion Johnson won't sign. Tyrone Fryer. Let's go for Dickerson because it'll be a one-year deal. Major, you've missed a lot. <laughs> a lot, a lot. Too much to even recap at this stage. Uh, just know that we are uh, in rebuild number two after a championship victory. Dickerson also signed. We have rebuilt our entire O-line in one free agency period. Holy shit. And still have $28.7 to show for it, knowing that it's factoring in all of our draft picks. Who's still available? McPherson is still available with no offers. Um, we can go for him now. We can go for Evan McPherson now and get that good kicker. And then for punters... I mean, it's either Stonehouse or Ryan Wright. At least Ryan Wright wants to be here. Payne is gone, yes. Traded to and then re-signed in Seattle for almost $400 million total. Pure insanity. Let's go for this guy, Ryan Wright. He's got 99 power. Who's gone? A lot of people. Like, the team is... We, we still have quite a few... Notable names and faces from the team, but there has been a lot of turnover, too. So. Broke out the bag. No kidding. All right, from there, let's see what happens with these two. We do... Nope, nope, maybe not. Louie, what's going on? Let's see, let's see. But yeah, uh, we, we made a lot of moves when it was clear that we weren't exactly favorites to repeat as champions. All right, so the evaluation periods are up. Let's see what happens heading into day two. FX, I thank you for the, uh, the fill-in information for people, though. Appreciate it. You might have mentioned something that I didn't, and you did. You mentioned more specifics than I did, so I tried to generalize. All right, so day two of free agency. College Pro Day results are in. we got to find out what's happening with our special teams unit, which we can now try to make as good as possible. Evan McPherson has signed. The punter has not, but he hasn't decided yet. Ryan, what's it going to be, buddy? Ryan Wright also signs. 21 million left. We have completely rebuilt the O-line. We have a safety net quarterback. And our special teams are sorted. Pretty much everybody, too, on cheaper deals than we really should have had to have sent in. I mean, this has been the miracle retooling. We are going to be right back into the Super Bowl hunt for next season. Despite trading away... A quarterback of that caliber, our offensive line, Dan Malone at linebacker, Forrest Harris on the D-line, losing Zach Henry and Bryson Wells or Bryce Wells at, at tight end. Like, this has been nuts. We're already showing up as an 87 overall team. Losing Kenny Pickett, the biggest hit to the team. As uh, Christian Gonzalez went to the Raiders, and he was the, the big, big name. Pay attention to there. Losing Kenny Pickett hurt the most. So we got these private workouts. This will give us the opportunity to hopefully get that 100% information on this quarterback situation. Uh, we got to try to get that information on Logan Gibbs as best we can. And if it's not him, I'm not too worried about some of the day three options. We need to know what defensive lineman is the best. There are a couple projected for the early first round. We start off with Jacoby Howard out of Miami. Let's take a look at uh, his information here. 23 years old out of the U. Has the strength, has the agility, has the speed. Has no finesse moves whatsoever. His block shedding also isn't great. His power moves are great. 
sucks that the finesse moves are that bad. Um, the grades early on for Justin Nix appear to be fucking awful. He doesn't have the strength, so he's a finesse, a finesse option. He's he's basically the invert, he's the invert of the other guy. Uh, there's Larry Short out of Mizzou. 21-year-old speed rusher. Uh, oof. His agility, though. Yeah. Yeah. There's Jeff Rodriguez. His grades are kind of... Yeah, man. I don't know if we're going to find necessarily what we want. Jacoby Howard is probably the fallback plan for that improvement. Uh, we'll select him. And honestly, we can look at Justin Nix. I mean, at the same time, is there anybody with an overly impressive grade set here? James Ford isn't the worst. This guy might not also be that bad. Let's look at James Ford. And then we got to go back to uh, quarterback, I think. Yeah, and go for Logan Gibbs. Those will be our three. Let me try to get a little bit more information on before this draft. I've reached them over hockey not being back part of the offseason. Eh, not quite there yet, but I get it. We have $21 million in cap space listed available with other moves we can make. <sighs> We might be right back on the championship hunt. 